Hi guys, I'm Kelly Norris, uh, back for your virtual tour number two. We're going to go over the engine today. I'm going to give people a few minutes to get uh, on the site and on the on the broadcast and things. I'm going to take you over here and show you one kind of neat thing that's going on right now though. So with COVID-19, we are refitting ourselves for APRs, which is an air purifying respirator. And in order to wear an APR with our standards, we have to go undergo what's called fit testing. So our fit testing is going on right now. You can see the little machine there in the middle on the table is a white fit tester. That's actually pulling air. In this case, uh, our firefighter on the left is doing his fit test. He's taking instructions from the firefighter on the right, breathing certain times. Right here, he's breaking his seal. Uh, so he'll get back on, um, put his mask back on, make sure that he gets a proper seal takes a breath, holds a breath, the machine calculates whether it's leaking air or not, and uh, the machine walks them through the whole process. So we're actually getting fit tested for all of our APRs. That's what I wanted to show you is that's going to be switching over. So instead of just wearing N95 mask, our personnel will have the choice of whether to wear one of these APRs or to wear an N95 mask. The APR obviously has a filter that goes in on the side and then has full face protection, full eye protection, and everything else for them. So undergoing that right now, when you see our crews come out, flip you around here. When you see our crews come out, they may or may not have an N95 mask on. They might have that full face mask on. It's a little bit harder to hear us and stuff. We'll work with you with that. But it gives us a little bit better protection, gives you a little bit better protection when we come out to the house. So I've got two people on right now. I'm going to wait till I get a few more. Oh, actually jumping up to seven and eight here. So give us just a few minutes. I'm gonna set the camera down for another minute or so, and then we'll get going on the actual uh, fire station tour. We got 11 on so far. 13. Okay. Numbers just keep climbing. I'm going to turn you guys over. This is Tyler Wenselman. He's one of our part-timers. He'll be holding the camera for the day. So we'll flip around. And you have to bear with us. Today's Tyler's first day running the video camera. So hopefully he does a good job. You can leave him in the comments and let him know if he does a good job or not. Uh, welcome back to Station 85, White House Fire Department. We are the fire department for the Village of White House. We do a little bit of history for us. We cover the Village of White House itself. We also have a contract where we cover parts of Waterville Township and parts of Swanton Township. So we provide contractual fire services for those areas. That's why you might see us running up, uh, up on Nower Road or around the Metro Parks and stuff. Those aren't actually in the Village White House, but we contract with those, those government entities to provide them fire and EMS services. Uh, we're coming in the back of our day, a little bit different. That's where our employees would come in. So they would come in, if they have a response, grab one of their masks that I just showed you in there on the table, and they would walk on up through here. We're gonna say, for today, we're going on a fire call. So we have a bank of portable radios. We bought all new radios this year for a grant. Uh, the city or township of Sylvania actually helped us get a grant for a bunch of departments in the area. Got all new radios, thousands of dollars that were spent, and the village just had to put a little bit in. So the guys who grab, guys or girls who grab one of the radios, just turn to the left and grab their set of gear. Uh, we went over gear last week with uh, Rita's gear and went over all that stuff. So we won't do that again this week this week if you want to look at that look at next week's video i guess i can make our kind of big announcement if you surf around a little bit we've actually gone ahead and opened up a youtube channel and we've uploaded last week's tour and a couple other little things and we'll be uploading this tour and we'll see if we can get some more video stuff on youtube for everyone to watch let's take a look on up here i'll let tyler walk down through this is engine 85 this is our newest engine this is manufactured by Sutphin Corporation in Columbus, Ohio. Sits on an international chassis. It's our newest vehicle. Um, off the top of my head, I want to say maybe three to four hundred thousand dollars was what we spent on this truck. Um, if you come out here, I'll show you one of the interesting things that you see on all the White House trucks. If you look somewhere on every White House truck, you'll see a big G. And if you're from the area, you better know what that's for. So if not, it's for our Anthony Wayne Generals. It's our local school district. And every one of our trucks has a General's emblem on it somewhere. So, engine 85. Here's where our driver sits. 
The drivers on fire trucks are a little bit more than just drivers. They're actually, that's the person that runs the pump. It's the person that has to know all the fluid hydraulics. It's the person you're gonna see that once the, the truck is connected to the hydrant, controlling all the levers on that pump panel that Ty's gonna look at now. So each one of these levers goes to a fire hose. You can see they're all labeled, they're all colored. If we look up here, we can see we have a yellow hose. Pull this down. Yellow hose, a blue hose, a red hose. If we come down here and look, we have a blue, we have a red. We can pull the appropriate color. Right now we've got a yellow hose that's substituted in. That should be an orange one. And that hose is out for cleaning right now. So we just have a temporary one in. Uh, all the gauges tell us basically the master is how much water is coming in and how much water is going out and then which nozzle it's going to. Everything else in here is what the engineer has to know how to do. So on top of driving to the fire, on top of running the lights and sirens and knowing where to go and such, the person in that driver's seat has to know how to run this part of the truck. That's their job when we arrive on scene for a fire. We'll hop back here. The back seat. I'll let Tyler hop up in there and take a look. Take a look, kids. The air packs are in all of our seats. So there's an air pack built into every seat. What's the most important thing that a firefighter has to wear on the way to a call? Just like when you guys are at home, we always wear our seatbelts. And our seatbelts are red now, so they're very easy for us to distinguish whether someone has it on or not. It's really easy for the boss guy who sits up front to turn around and see if everyone's wearing their seatbelts. Plus, we've got indicators on the dash that tell us. So while we're doing that, we have our seatbelt on, we put our air pack on while we're driving, get all ready to go. We have extra portable radios for the guys in case they didn't grab one on the back wall, some flashlights, and a thermal imaging camera we'll take a look at here in a few minutes. Let's walk on back here. First compartment past the pump panel is usually going to be the engineer's compartment. That driver is the engineer. He's running all the pump. And here's all of his tools. So ours, we have a slide out tray. He can pick from different adapters he needs. If he needs to adapt into hydrants, open hydrants, that sort of thing. Change hoses. All kinds of tools for him to work on what he needs to. Because the other guys are going to be inside the house or moving hoses and that sort of thing. On this one, come back to our second part of our engine 85, open it up, have our ventilation saw, just a standard steel saw, although it is made for the fire service, so we have a depth gauge on, this is what we would use to cut a hole in the roof to ventilate your house, uh, if we always tell kids, smoke goes up, so you want to go down. You want to get low and go, all the kids should be focused on get low and go, and then the smoke goes up and we cut the hole in the roof to let the smoke out, that's the basics of it. There's our, our saws, our fuel, that sort of thing. Easily accessible for the guys, stored up a little bit higher. We try to make use of every space we can on a fire truck. So if you take a look in here, the little wheel well space was a space maybe 10 or 15 years ago that wasn't used a whole lot. And over the past, I a few years, manufacturers have gone to making a hole for our SCBAs. So a lot of times on the sides of the truck you'll see that now. Just allows us to carry a little bit more in the same amount of space. NJ85 is kind of unique. This compartment is what makes it unique. And what this is, it's basically it's a, what would be other departments would call a rescue engine. It's made to do auto extrication. And here's where all of our auto extrication tools are. So auto extrication is where if you crash a car, we need to cut you out of the car if the door's bent, something like that, you need to get you out. This is what we would use. We have a hydraulic pump. This pumps fluid into these two hoses, the orange and the green, which then go down to tools. And then we use these tools to cut into the car. We can either, this is a combi tool, we'll go here first. You can you zoom in on that tile? This is a cutter. So this here cuts, it closes and cuts whatever's in here. And then this tool back here is a spreader, kind of like a giant pair of scissors. It can open or it can close with pressure. So we can peel stuff away or we can close and crush stuff. If we look in here, we have hydraulic rams. So the rams expand. If we need to move something, move a wall, a seat, something like that, and we have a solid surface we can press against. This will expand out to make it up twice its length. Extra tips for those rams. 
If we have to, we can put spikes on them. We can put little foot pads on so we can brace up against tires or the street or other things in the car, trees, whatever we need to go to. As we come on around. Take a look. Up top in the fire truck, where all the holes are going to carry. So this is our large diameter hose. This is what we, we go from the fire hydrant to the truck with typically, or from one fire truck to another fire truck. This is going to be four inch or five inch hose on most trucks. This is three inch and two and a half inch. This one's pretty connected, so this is just kind of an overgrown fire hose, a little bigger than the one we would typically take in. And then we come over here, we have the ones that we would typically take in, or into three quarter lines. A little bit smaller, still a lot bigger than your garden hose. Here's our positive pressure fan. I'll let you kids take a look. What do you guys think we would use a positive pressure fan for in a house? If your house is on fire, it's going to be filled with what? Smoke. And then we can take this when the fire's out and blow the smoke out of the house. We can also use this for other things. We have noxious odors, things like that. We have an unknown gas. If we want to ventilate out, we can use this and kind of move some air over it. Have a hydrant connection kit. All of our connections to hook into hydrants. Another important hammer. Something doesn't move, we can make it move. And I want Tyler to take a look at this here. You guys see this? What do you think this is? Looks kind of weird. Anybody know what that is? That's an air hose. So we have air operated tools on the truck that we could use. We also have air bag zone tools around the truck that we can use to lift things and then we get our air supply from here, it comes right off of the truck. And when the truck's on, I can hit that button and the hose will reel right back up. Okay? Lots of little safety features on our truck. Underneath each of the steps is a light. So at nighttime we can see when we're climbing up the steps. And just like your car at home probably, a little backup camera. The truck's really big, it's a lot bigger than your mom and dad's car. So if you're backing up in the fire truck, we have to have someone back here helping us. But we also have a video camera to help. Come on around. This is some more of our auto extrication stuff. Look here we have cribbing. So we can stabilize vehicles if they're on their side or they're propped up or whatever. We can put different amounts of plastic cribbing under them. Make them kind of prop up so that they're stable so they don't rock back and forth, especially when we're working on them. If we're cutting on one side of the car, we don't want the other side of the car to kind of be rocking back and forth. That's how we stabilize it. We come back up. Would you be willing to turn the battery on and the ignition just to the first spot, please? Thanks. Some extra things. You guys see what this is? What's every firefighter got to carry? An axe. That's right. There's one axe. Captain McNutt's here doing the fit testing today. He just turned the truck on for me so we can have some lights and we can see a little, a little bit better. Just some standard hose wrenches, hydrant wrenches. Okay, each of the drawers slides out so we can maximize the amount of room that we have. Fire extinguisher. Sledgehammer in case we really have to get somewhere. What's that look like to you guys? Any idea? This is what we would call a forcible entry tool. This is a Halligan tool. That would help us get into a house. If a door was locked, we can use it to break down a door, actually prop the door or spread the door open. Use it for a lot of other things. We can use this to shut off a gas line if we have to. Your gas meter has a little valve on it. Those forks go right into that valve with no problem. You can also use it to pry and to puncture. And as you can see, let you guys take a look at this. I think someone's been using our Halligan a lot. We need to fix that a little bit, grind that down. We just went through some RIT training and some forceful entry training at the old White House Elementary School, White House Primary. And this tool probably got a lot of use over there, so we need to take a look at that. But always in the state of readiness for us to go. We can use it right now if we can to come on up. Got some toolboxes. This vehicle does respond, like I said, to auto crashes. So here's one of the ways we save room. What's this? Anybody know? So one of the ways that we save room and one of, the, one of the ways we carry a lot of stuff on a little bit of space. 
flaps, flaps back up in. Look down here. We have a little generator. This has a portable light on it. We can throw it behind houses and stuff at night if we need to light them up. Throw them in your front yard if we had if we're at your house at night and we need light for whatever reason. Also can produce electricity and run some tools for us. We have an extra can of gas. Again, those same two compartments, you guys remember what was in there? Those from the last time around? That's right, those hose bob, those hose tanks, or the air tanks, I'm sorry. So more SCBA tanks. Those are the same tanks the guys carry on their back. Let's take a look in here. Lots of stuff on this truck, isn't there? So, again, we have this little slide out drawer. We come out, slide it down. This one's really heavy. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Look at this. What do you guys think this is? Oh, look at that. It's a bag full of rope. Rope in case we need to tie something up. If we need to lift a tool. We can hoist things with that. We can tie things off with that. What about this? It's kind of an old looking case. I saw Carol Asmus was on. She's one of our retired firefighters. Carol, do you remember what this one is? This was on the old uh, 852 or 853, the old rescue. These are our air hoses. Remember, I, we saw the air hose on the back? Connects into here, and it goes through these to power our tools or airbags. We've gotten some new tools, but we've kept the old case. Then, this is kind of the big bag in here. What's this? Take a look at this. I'll have Tyler come up a little bit closer to this. These are struts. And a strut is what we would use to stabilize a car with, too. It has a big base. We put the base on the floor, or on the ground. We put this into the car somewhere. We put it on a ledge, onto a lip of metal. Uh, we have points in here where we can put them into the tail light. We can bust the tail light out. There's some metal there that we can get to. Anything like that, and then run a strap underneath and tighten it up and create a wedge point, create a triangle on the side of the car, if you will, and then the car is stable and won't, won't uh, rock back and forth for us. That's kind of neat. We have a set, two of those are in there. If you guys have questions along the way, type them in. Tyler's looking at the comments. And he'll let me know what your questions are, if you have any. Hopefully you guys are liking the tours. We're going to try to do a couple more things next week. Some different things while you're home. Close that up. I want to show you the airbags. We said we carry airbags. I want to get the small one out. This guy's a little long. So here's our airbag. Real thick rubber. Kind of feels like a basketball. But this can lift a car. So this swells up when I put air into it. About double, it's about this much. And I've got three different sizes of them. And we can use to lift all kinds of heavy objects off people. Come on up here. Firefighters in the group should know this. Most of the Lucas County trucks are labeled with a compartment that has a RIT pack in it. RIT is Rapid Intervention Team. These are the guys that go and save the firefighters if they get stuck inside. So we lift this up. Our RIT pack is in here. Consists of an extra air bottle, an extra mask in case their mask fails when they're inside. Somebody can take them a new one. Also, some extra tools here for the guys. A couple of trash cans. A lot of times we end up going out and cleaning out chimneys or we'll clean out some burnt stuff and we want to save some property. We throw it in here and can take it outside for the folks. Look at these two cases here. This one says Milwaukee Super Sawzall. And this one just says battery. On the side, also says Milwaukee, doesn't it? Kind of weird. Wonder why we got two of them. What do you think? Why would a firefighter have two of whatever? This is? So these are our sawzaws. We have two because one runs on battery, the other one runs on electricity. So we have two different ways to power it when we're on scene. If we need to go off away from the truck far away, we can use the battery one. If we are right at the truck, we have extension cords off the truck, the truck has its own generator, we can just use the, the powered one.
Robin Christman says hello. I'm sorry? Robin Christman says hello. Oh, Robin's watching. Hi, Robin. So, I want you guys to take a look. Tyler's going to have to turn back in here a little bit. Come on this side. Guys, look here. The white piece of pipe that comes down here goes all the way to the top. And it comes all the way down to this. I wonder what the heck that is. A little valve right there. Hmm. Any ideas? We go on car crashes. What happens at a car crash? If you crash a car, oil might come out of it, gas might come out of it, some other fluids might come out of it. So what do we have to do? This is where our kitty litter is. It's called dry zord for us. There's a huge container up here that's full of dry zord. Comes down to this little pipe and we can fill buckets with it right on the road. Fill up a bucket, throw it on the ground and keep filling buckets. And that way we can carry a lot with us and a little bit of space. Come on up. A couple more hose connections. A place to put water in. Anything typically on the top is where water comes out. Anything on the bottom typically is where water goes in. So I can put water into the truck here and take water out of the truck here. I want you guys to take a look while we're here. I'll have Tyler go clear. To the, why don't you go clear to the back of the truck and look up at the ladder. So you guys see how where that ladder is? That's way up there. You guys see these tools here? I can't really get those, can I? How on earth do I get those? I probably just stand up here, right? I still I can just barely touch it. Any idea how we get those down? Let's go take a look. Tyler, come on up here. We'll have you look at this. It's, it's on a powered rack. So we turn the rack on. And now we look up there. If I ran it all the way, that would come all the way down to the ground for us, and we could pick the ladder and the tools right up off of it. And then when we're done, put it back up and turn it off. One of the important things, we talked about how important the driver is. He's not just a driver with us, he's an engineer, or she's an engineer. And they have to think about when they pull in the driveway, when that comes off, it comes out maybe 10 feet. So they can't park right next to a tree or right next to a house or something. They have to allow enough room on that side of the house, uh, that side of the truck, to operate this equipment off of. This is just the other side. I'll have you take a peek up in there. So there's a couple things in there, like we said, just our normal air packs, like we carry normally. I'll show you one of our flashlights. Normal flashlight, just like you have at home, except for we got some blue lights on it. This way when I'm walking through a fire, if it's smoky, my partner behind me might be able to see me. And then we can also throw it into this mode where it blinks. So if I'm in trouble, I can draw some more attention to myself that way. Kind of a neat way to do it. Back on the charger. Just like all of our vehicles now, extra stuff for COVID-19, some extra masks, some extra glasses, that kind of thing for us. I climb up in here. If Robin Christmas on, I want to show her something. Show all of you something. Take a look at this. It's a little bag from Life Flight. Wonder what that's it. What do you guys think that? What, what's in there? Why would we need to have anything for Life Flight? Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's interesting. What do you guys think that is? There's five of them in here. There's four white ones and, and there's an amber one. So a total of five lights and it's in a bag for a light flight. Any ideas? What do you guys think that is? That's right. If we're at a car crash, we might have to call a life flight or Prometica to come and land their helicopter, right? When they land a helicopter, they need to see where they're going. So this helps us mark a spot for them. If they want a 100 by 100 foot spot, and what we do is we take the lights and we mark the corners for it, and they can see that from the air. And that's nice. They gave out bags a few years ago, and we still carry the bag and still have all the lights with us. I'm going to show you guys this here. We looked at this a minute ago. A thermal imaging camera. 
So is it booting up there? Yep. I'm going to show you. This is what a firefighter would take into a house with us. And I'm going to have Tyler walk back here because I know Kevin's back here. We can take a look at him. If he's hiding somewhere. There we go. So it's kind of like a video camera. But it senses heat. So what I want to show you here. Just take a look at this glass here. You have to look in at the camera. See how it reflects us? Because it can't see through glass. But it can tell us there's a wall there. We can see there's a mop handle there. There's our phone. But here's how it shows heat. I want to show you guys. See, that's a wall you're looking at. Can you guys see the screen? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put my hand here for a minute. So you guys see my hand, right? If I point that right at my hand, see in the bottom corner? It says my hand's about 77, 76 degrees. It's taking the temperature for me. Watch what happens when I take my hand away. You can see where my hand was warm and where it warmed up part of the wall. And over time, that'll fade back out. But that helps us find people if we have to in a fire. If we walk over here, if we find him real quick. Ooh, look at that. You guys see what I see? See the yellow? What on earth is that? The ceiling's 450 degrees. 400, 300. What on earth is going on? What do you think? I'll try to look up at the ceiling there normally. That's our heaters. Our heaters are on right now. So that's heating up the whole apparatus bay for us. We'll come out here. We'll take a look at Captain McNutt as he's walking away. Hey, Captain McNutt, can you wave? There. So Kevin's our training captain. He's here today doing fit testing. You can even see in the mat or in the video image that he's wearing a mask. He's going to do the same thing I did to the barn or to the wall over there. But watch, takes his hand away. You can still see that little spot. So it's all about science. That's kind of a neat little gadget, isn't it, guys? Not foolproof. Won't find you if you're hiding somewhere from us or if you're behind a door. If you're behind a door, if you're in a bathtub, something like that, that's not where you want to be. Where do you guys want to go when the fire alarm goes off at your house? Where do you think you want to go? I want you guys to say, get out, stay out. Okay? You guys can remember, get out, stay out. That's where we'll be. We'll be outside, right? Come on. Let's set this down for a minute. Tyler, I'm going to have you walk up and get in the officer seat. I'll walk around on the driver's seat. So if you guys remember from last week, we went through our medic unit. We went over that we have a computer. These are the same computers that you saw on the wall last week and in the truck. The computers tell us where we're going, what call we're going to, tells us anything you tell the 911 dispatcher. And there's some other little things in here. We have our radio, just like our medic units. We have a gas meter, so that if you have a gas leak or something, we can come into your house and we can use this and it'll tell us if it's dangerous to be in the house or not. Help us find out. What's this? There was one of these in the medic units last week and we didn't go over it. This is called a Knox vault, a Knox key secure. See this key in here? I can't get it out. I wonder why. That's because this key fits Knox boxes in the village of White House. So if we go up to a business, say for instance Dollar General, they're open right now. So if they had a fire alarm, I could just walk into Dollar General. It wouldn't be a problem. What if their fire alarm goes off at 2 o'clock in the morning? They're not there. We don't want to break the door down if it's not really on fire, right? So I can punch in a key, a number here. This key will come out. A computer logs that I have the key in my possession. And they have a box that looks a lot like this. It's a brown box. It's up on their wall. And I can pop that, open that up. There's a key in there for me to get into the, into the business. A lot of our businesses have these. Actually, six or seven residences in the Village White House also have those. So for older folks and stuff, if they fall and they're, they live alone or whatever, they can uh, get a knock vault from us, and we can use the key to make entry to their home without breaking down stuff. So with that, were there any questions that popped up, Tyler?
No mm-hmm. questions at all this week. So we did about a half an hour. We'll do probably another half an hour next week. We'll go over maybe the aerial ladder next time. And then we got the water tender to go. Plenty of them to go. Hopefully you guys are liking us on Facebook. Hopefully you're watching our videos. Hopefully you're kind of maybe watching the police department. They're putting out some funny videos. You know, they got a lot of time on their hands. They're cops. You know, they're just sitting around. So, but hopefully you guys are being safe. We're going to put out something next week for a home escape plan or a fire safety plan. And uh, we'll see you then. Okay. Have a good day, guys.